Dr. Jay Bhattacharya is a Stanford University medical professor. He's been investigating the death rate from coronavirus, a fascinating and important number, and he joins us tonight. Doctor, thanks so much for coming on. What are you concluding no, about the real death rate, the actual death rate from this virus? I think we're, I think based on the evidence I've seen so far, it's, it's likely orders of magnitude lower than the initial estimates. Uh, the, the World Health Organization put an estimate out that was, I think, was initially 3.4 percent. It's, it's very unlikely that it's anywhere near that. It's, it's much likely, uh, much closer to the death rate that you see from the flu uh, per case. Uh, the problem, of course, is that we don't have a vaccine. So in that sense, it's more, it's more deadly and more widespread than the flu. Right. And uh, it overwhelms hospital systems in ways the flu doesn't. But per case, I don't think it's as deadly as people have thought. I know that it's very hard to come up with any kind of firm numbers in the absence of, of widespread testing, but do you think it's likely that there are large numbers of Americans who've been infected, recovered, and didn't know it? Yes, I believe that that is true. Um, in fact, we're going to start to know that very, very soon. I've been working on studies uh, with some colleagues of mine in, uh, in in Santa Clara County, in Los Angeles County, and and then also a, a large nationwide study working with Major League Baseball employees, uh, not just athletes, but all the employees. Uh, very soon, we're going to have a, a, a ac I think a, a much more accurate understanding of how widespread this is. Uh, evidence from the around the world is 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 flowing in, and it's it's really seems like there's many many cases of the coronavirus that uh, that we we haven't identified with with the the testing regimens that we've had around the world. Uh, many orders of magnitude more people have been infected with it than I think uh, I think that we realize, and that as you as you rightly pointed out means that we uh, the, the the death rate is actually low. Than we than people have realized, also by orders of magnitude. So, so one of the one of the destructive byproducts of this pandemic is fear, which is itself, I, I would say, it clearly is hurting people. You're mm. an, an American, in addition to a physician and a researcher. Based on the research that you have done, are you more afraid or less afraid than you were when you began? I'm, I'm less afraid than I was when I began. I'm. I'm um, I, I think. Um, I mean, I, I I've heard so many stories of people who can't hug their grandkids. Who are scared to hug their because they don't they don't want to get uh, the virus from from their from their from their kids because they're older. I've heard lots of stories of even of like uh, husbands and wives that can't won't won't hug each other because the the the, the wife is a nurse and the frontline worker. Uh, I think this sort of the, uh, understanding really the true death rate. If the death rate somewhere near one in a thousand, would you would you not hug your wife? I mean, it, I, if it's three in a hundred, you act very differently than if it's one in a thousand. So I'm hoping right. once we get accurate numbers in, in place, uh, we'll be able to really sort of quell the fear that's out there. This disease, by contrast, is entirely new. It's literally a novel coronavirus. Early accounts said the mystery illness coming from central China could be transmitted far more easily than the flu and that the death rate was remarkably high. Some reports suggested it could kill two, three, five, even eight percent of all those who got it. Worst case scenarios predicted millions and millions of people would die. The public was horrified. They still are. But how afraid should they be? As of April 4th, New York had more than 60,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus and a little over 2,200 deaths. If more than 15 percent of New York's population was infected, that would suggest a total of 1.3 million cases in New York with only about 150,000 of them showing symptoms. In other words, the virus would be far more widespread than we expected it to be, but also far less deadly than we expected. The actual death rate would not be 3 or 4 percent. It would be closer to 0.2 percent. If the infection is more widespread than we thought, by definition, that means the virus is less deadly. That would mean our burden on the healthcare system would be lower than we expected it to be. And in fact, we are seeing that. It would also mean that coronavirus may be closer than we knew to running its course. It would mean an awful lot of people have already been infected with it and then recovered without even knowing it. And those people could pause and let relief sweep over them and then get back to their lives. Above all, if this is true, if these trends hold, it would mean that the rest of us could be slightly less terrified going forward. Yes, this is awful. Yes, people are dying. Yes, they will continue to die here in the U.S. But it would not quite be the plague we thought it was. And that might give us some perspective. We could begin maybe to think clearly again. Most of us want all of that badly. But do our leaders want that? Sometimes when you watch them, you begin to suspect they're secretly enjoying our fear.